Hello again, it's Alokan here. And as promised in my last video, I will be giving you a full review of each of the individual ethnic groups found in my genome from my Ancestry DNA test kit. So as I previously stated, the largest percentage of my genome comes from Mali, which is almost a quarter. In the previous video, I did give a description of the Mali Empire already, but I'm going to go over it again because there are quite a few very important things that I left out. One of which that Malian people can trace their lineage back to the largest empire that Africa has ever seen, the Songhai. The Songhai Empire was actually larger than all of Western Europe combined. Believe it or not, Mali actually has one of the longest, extensive, well-documented, and recorded histories out of any other sub-Saharan African nation, Ethiopia being another one of the big contenders. Contrary to what most people teach about sub-Saharan Africans, the Malians were actually literate. They have thousands upon thousands of books, actually many being discovered today dating back from the 1200s. These books contain anything from food recipes, from mathematics, astronomy, science, even texts from famous Greek and Roman writers were found in these libraries. There is one find in these manuscripts that is particularly interesting, and that's a possible voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. That's right, according to both Malian and Arabic sources, the Malian ruler may have launched a fleet across the Atlantic Ocean as early as the year 1310, almost 200 years prior to Christopher Columbus's historic voyage. Apparently, the Atlantic Ocean was compared to the Niger River. Though it is very vast, they believe the Atlantic Ocean had another bank, so to speak. Mansa Musa himself, worth over $400 billion, the richest man in the world's history, is said to have been the one to take over the throne after the previous ruler abandoned his throne in search of the limits of the Atlantic Ocean. The previous ruler financed the building of over 2,000 ships, all stocked to the teeth, with food, water, supplies, as well as many different craftsmen of many different trades to last them for two years during their perilous journey across the Atlantic Ocean. Numerous accounts of blacks already present in the New World prior to Christopher Columbus's voyage have been made by Christopher Columbus himself, as well as the Native Americans. Even the art, religion, and even some place names found in South and Central America have some striking parallels to those found in Western Africa. Unfortunately, however, there is insufficient archaeological evidence to confirm any of these claims. And as mentioned before, Mali was also home to the richest man who has ever existed, known as Manta Musa. Manta Musa was so rich that he led a caravan for thousands of miles across the Sahara Desert, with over 60,000 men all carrying tons of his gold, giving away gold throughout his entire journey, eventually ending it in Mecca. Even after returning back to his kingdom, he had left the economy of the Mediterranean in shambles. The price of gold had dropped dramatically for the next decade. Musa's historical pilgrimage literally put West Africa on the map. The Congo Cameroon area has seen the rise and fall of many states throughout its history. Though this part of Africa has never seen the rise of one large literate state such as the Mali Empire, it has seen the rise and fall of many smaller states comparable in size to those found in Europe. The Congo Kingdom was the largest and most influential and powerful kingdom in Central Africa, with a history dating back to the year 1390. The Congo Kingdom was one of the first sub-Saharan nations to develop trade relations with a European state. When the Portuguese first arrived in Congo in the year 1483, they already found a well-established kingdom with a capital city of over 100,000 inhabitants. Contrary to the racist views that Europeans developed on Africans on the centuries to come, the Portuguese had great reverence for the Congo people and treated them as equals. The social and political structure of the Congo Kingdom was highly impressive and highly organized. The Congo Kingdom has seen the rise of many different unique types of architectural styles, as well as expert craftsmanship in iron that impressed all visitors, including the Portuguese. Also, other than the Ethiopians, the Congo were the first sub-Saharan nation to adopt Christianity. Over time though, as with other European contacts with Africa, these friendly relations dwindled. Many battles took place in which the Portuguese saw numerous defeats at the hands of the Congo archers. It said that the Congo military was able to field numbers as large as 20,000 men, and some accounts even include numbers as high as 70,000, though there is no sufficient evidence to back these claims. As the years went by and European greed and racism increased, warfare between the two kingdoms became increasingly more prevalent. It wasn't until the year 1891, however, which was over 400 years after initial contact, that the Kingdom of Portugal was finally able to take over the Kingdom of Congo and assimilating the kingdom into the colony of Angola. Nigeria historically has been one of the most ethnically diverse as well as highly populated areas in the world. 
Out of all these ethnic groups, the largest and most influential have been the Hausa, the Yoruba, and the Igbo. Historically, the Hausa practiced the Islam faith and were divided into many loosely centralized states. These states would later be conquered by Fulani invaders and annexed into the Sokoto Caliphate. Like the Malian Empire, the Hausa states were known for being very literate, as were most other Muslim countries at the time. The Hausa were also known for their full body armor. This armor consisted of thick layers of padded cotton worn both by the rider and the horse. Historically, the Igbo people were part of the Inri Kingdom, one of the oldest kingdoms found in Sub-Saharan Africa, with the history dating back to the year 948 AD. Although the neighboring Yoruba kingdoms were more well known for bronze casting, the Igbo people were also quite proficient with this technique. Traditionally, the Igbo have always been a very kind and peace-loving people. Unlike the majority of Africa at the time, the Igbo were actually one of the few who practiced no slavery in any sense of the word. In fact, any runaway slave that successfully made it to the Inri Kingdom was free. On top of this, the king of the Inri Kingdom exercised no military authority over his people. Most West African states viewed the Inri Kingdom as a spiritual sanctuary, comparable to cities like Jerusalem. The Igbo people were also unique in the fact that they elected their kings versus hereditary rule. Despite the pacifistic nature of the Igbo people, the Inri Kingdom lasted for almost a thousand years until it was finally conquered by the British Empire in the year 1911. Even after Nigeria gained its independence from Britain, the Igbo still had differing political views from most of Africa, which is what led to the Nigerian Civil War. There are many other kingdoms, states, and empires that arose and fell throughout West and Central Africa's extensive history. However, it would be impossible for me to cover all of them. The next video in this series will encompass the remainder of all African ancestry I have in my genome. If you liked the video, please click the like button and subscribe if you want more videos like these. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and click the dislike button, but please do me the courtesy of leaving some constructive criticism and letting me know what I can do better next time. Also, don't forget to like our Facebook page for more videos, content, and updates. This has been Alokan, and this has been brought to you by Human Behaviors.